So by the end of this video, we will create a zoom effect we can control in Storyline with buttons. We will have a button to zoom in on command, we will zoom out on command, and we will also be able to move the image around while we are zoomed in. So let's explore how zooming works in Storyline. I'm just going to insert a zoom region here. And I'm going to resize this green frame and put it right here on my first category. And then I'm going to create a, another zoom region and put it on my second category. Oops, just like this. So if uh, I drag these around in the timeline, the first one will always be zoom one. But if I move it here, it will be it will be zoom two. So this is zoom one. I'm going to extend this so it lasts longer. And this is zoom two. And if I right click here, I can rename it. But I can't change the speed from here. I need to right click on the green frame like this and set the zoom transition speed. I want it very slow. And the same here. So if I publish this, the timeline will play, my zoom will come up, then my second zoom, and there we go. That's how zooming works. Now, personally, I almost never use this because I don't like the way it works and how little control I have over it. So, for example, I'm now going to add a button to control when the zoom happens. So, let me just delete this. I'm going to just position this. And let's add a button. So I'm going to name it Zoom 1, put it right here. If the user clicks this button, so how do I get it to actually jump to the zoom? Well, first off, I have to pause the timeline so the timeline doesn't play from the beginning and reach the zoom. So I have to create a trigger to pause the timeline when the timeline starts. Then I'm going to have to right click on this on alignment and I'm going to align the playhead to the object start and create a cue point at the playhead and create another cue point somewhere in the middle right here. So far so good. So when I click this button, I want to be able to jump to the cue point. Let me select cue point here to the first cue point and have this checked so that our timeline can unpause and play as normal. Then when the timeline reaches the second cue point, I want to create a new trigger. So when the timeline reaches the second cue point, I want to pause the timeline again. And if I publish this right now and click the button, you can see that the timeline is paused so that our zoom doesn't play. If I click the button, it zooms in and it stays zoom in because I created a pause timeline trigger right around here. So if I were to create another button to reset the zoom, I would have it jump to somewhere around here when the zoom ends. So I'm going to create another cue point right here. You can see how this can get really complex or needlessly complex really fast. I have this reset button, but I can't put it uh, below this one because this button, when the zoom happens, this button disappears here. So I can't reset the zoom. I would have to put this button here, perhaps at a smaller size than this one, and maybe have it start somewhere around here. So. Let's see what happens if I put it at the same time uh, at the same size as this zoom button right here. So I click this button, the reset button shows up, but it is huge right here. I would have to make it way smaller to fit on the page. So if all my buttons have the same size and I want to keep them that way, this is not going to work. I have to make this smaller, adjust the text. If it's a custom shape, now I'm using the 
default buttons right now. I have to make this smaller, perhaps put it right here, make this way smaller. It's still gonna be very big compared to the size of the frame. So if I zoom in right now, you can see that the button is smaller, but it's still huge compared to this one. So this one is like, I don't know, 15% of the frame on the X and 5% on the Y. So it's out of, uh, out of proportion. So we can do this better. And we can do this by using GSAP. First off, I'm going to delete the zoom region right here. I'm going to delete all the cue points and I'm going to delete all the triggers right here. And I'm going to recreate the reset button. And actually, I'm just going to put them right here and perhaps add a add a shape behind them so it's like a volume control bar. So, this is another option that I don't like when I work with cue points and move my playhead, it stays there locked in place. I have to manually transport it back. It's just a pain. Here we go, let's make it a bit transparent. So first off, let's handle the zoom. In order to do that, I will have to create an execute JavaScript trigger. When the user clicks the button one, which we're going to rename to button zoom. And this one we're going to call button reset. And before we do anything, I'm just going to group all of these together, including the background. I'm just going to create a group. I'm going to right click on the group. Be, be careful with this, because if you right click to select the group right here, you could accidentally select the rectangle, for example, which is my background in this case. I want to select the whole group, so I'm going to right click and change its accessibility text to my group. Hit close. Then I'm going to move into my Visual Studio and use GSAP to animate this. But first we have to select the element. So I'm going to create a new variable and call it the animation target. Equals human query selector. Here we're going to just select the accessibility text. So I'm going to type in data ACC dash text equals open a to single quotes and type in my group, which is the name we gave our group for the accessibility text. And now I'm just going to type in GSAP dot two. We're going to animate the animation target. And we're going to increase its scale to a value of 2. So we're going to make it twice its size. We're going to give it a transform origin of, let's say, center left. And a duration of 5 seconds should be enough. So I'm going to highlight this, copy it, and paste it into my JavaScript trigger and publish it. So whereas in this example, we are zooming, moving the camera into the object we want to zoom in on. Here, we're just keeping the camera static and moving our, we're stretching our image so that it seems like we're zooming into it. So let's press the button. You can see what I mean. And we know it's our image that we're stretching because our buttons stay in the same position we put them on. So it's going to refresh this, hit this again, and our image will scale from the center left, which is right here. Now, keep in mind that you will have to adjust these values through trial and error. For example, if you haven't selected the whole background, only these three elements, you will have to adjust these through trial and error. Now let's handle the reset button. For the reset, what we want to do is uh, I'm just going to duplicate this trigger when the user clicks button reset. And for the reset, we're just basically going to let me just copy and paste this and create a comment so we know that we reset this. We're going to scale it to 1. So we will reset its scale 
to be 100% of its size. So it's initial scale. And we're going to actually delete this. So we can use the set here, the set method to set it instantly. Or we can use that too if we want to add a duration. But perhaps we'll leave it at the default 0 0.5. So I'm going to delete this duration parameter and let's see how that looks. Copy this into my trigger for the reset button. And if I zoom in now, I'm going to wait for this to finish animating and click on reset. You can see that I can actually do this for as long as I want. Now make sure you Wait for the animation to finish before clicking on reset or you're going to have this this uh, glitch because the animation isn't finished. So the five seconds we set for our zoom animation haven't completed. So it's going to just resume. The easiest way to prevent this is just by adding a shape over this button and set it to appear for as long as the zoom animation goes on. Now, what's cool about this is that you can also create a button like this one, which we will use to move the zoom image to the right. So let's do that. I'm just going to edit this right here. So instead of scale, we are going to affect the, let's delete all of this. We are going to affect the position on the X axis and we're going to use the X percent and we're going to increase it by, by plus equals let's say 3% so that it's a small value. And now if I click OK and publish, when I click this zoom and wait for it to finish, I can also click this arrow to move the image. Now you have this white line showing up here. And we have another problem that the button also works while we are zoomed out. We're going to fix those. Let's create also the, we're going to have just a nice, some nice controls here for our zoomed image and for the, let's also rename them. And now let's edit the JavaScript for each of them. So for the button top, I am going to have a Y percent of minus equals three. And from, for the button bottom I will have a y percent of plus equals three and the same applies to the left button I will have it minus equals three so let's see what we have now so if I zoom in right now I can move the image to the left or actually I it's the other way around let me just fix that I just have to invert all the values. So I have inverted the values and now it feels much better. Now, if we move the image, the problem is that when we press the reset button, we will have the image appear somewhere around here. So we have to fix that. And there's a really easy way to do this. So in our reset button, we also have to set the X percent to zero and the Y percent to zero along with our scale. There we go. So just updating our code in the reset button should solve our issue. If I press reset, everything is fine. Let's also try this while we're zoomed out. If I press reset, everything. So the image uh, goes to its initial position. That's perfect. Now there's a lot of things we can polish on this iteration and we will do that. So for example, I want this button, I want these buttons to show up only when the image is, is uh, zoomed in and I want it to disappear when the, when we zoom out. So what, uh, one solution I thought up would be to just create another layer, call it zoom controls or to be more specific, zoom position controls and just move the buttons to the layer like so and have the layer only show up when we press the zoom button. So we're having a show layer trigger when the user clicks the zoom button 
and we're having a hide layer trigger when the user clicks the reset button. Let's see how that works. There we go. Now it, it's much closer to what we intended. Okay, I can move the image around and when I reset the button disappears the, the zoom controls. That's perfect. Now I could only group these elements right here and give them the accessibility name of my group. And if I publish this, I can see that I can zoom in and I can move them as much as I want. I won't even get any white lines here. And the beautiful thing about this is maybe I want to zoom this and shrink these while this one is zoomed. I can have so many possibilities open to me. So I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like if you did and enjoy using it in your project.